Hey, and welcome to the first devlog for as yet untitled Metroidvania. I've been making small projects for a while for fun for game jams and finally decided to move on to something a bit bigger. This game's going to be a platformer Metroidvania heavily inspired by games like Ori in the Blind Forest and Hollow Knight. I'm leaning more into the Ori style with a focus on platforming and less focus on combat. This game follows a monster hunter who decides to help the monsters and lift their curses rather than destroy them. All the monsters and enemies will be creatures from myths and legends that you'll hopefully be familiar with and see in a different light. I wanted to make sure the player controller was really robust first and foremost, so I don't have to make too many changes going forwards. So therefore, at this stage, that's going to be my main focus. I'm building the controller from scratch to give me as much power to fine tune as needed, plus it's fun, so the same. I've outlined the core mechanics I want the player to have at the start of the game, and some of the more obvious mechanics you'll unlock going forward. The player will start with a basic movement, including a jump and a basic attack. As you explore the interconnected world, you'll un unlock more abilities, which allow you to make more progress. These will include a double jump, a wall jump, a dash, and loads more. Not all will be required to progress, but I want to encourage player exploration as much as possible. When it comes to building the player character, there's three ways you can really approach this in Unity. You can set the player's velocity, you, every, you can set the player's position every frame, or you can apply forces to the player as a physics object. I generally try and steer away from force-based movement as it has a tendency to feel pretty floaty, and I want the movement to feel as tight as possible. My first prototype of the character controller was done by setting the velocities, as that's what I've done for most of my projects in the past and is what I'm most familiar with. But it became quite a limiting factor when I was trying to add force to the player, such as from knockback or wall jumping. You end up overwriting the player's velocity whenever you try and apply movement to them. I decided to therefore pivot and attempt to build a player controller using forces. Um, I'm quite pleased with how it's turned out as I've managed to um, build in some logic into when the forces are applied to remove as much floatiness as possible and I think it feels pretty tight and I'm really pleased with that. This is just a quick introduction to the project but I'm hoping to keep posting regular updates on here as well as getting some art going as soon as possible. If you do want to stay up to date then please consider subscribing and maybe give me a follow on Twitter. I'll leave the details in the description.